Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Today I'm bringing you this stone. We're gonna make it together. It's a bit of a curiosity, but uh, that's why I like it. It's a weird one, let's just say it. It's a natural stone covered in a trillium flower shape with lots of sparkle, color, and crystals. It's a happy little stone and I hope that you enjoy making it as much as I did. For this project, I use my three and a half inch Mandela reversible stencil collection. You can use three and a half inch or five inch, and you actually don't need to use this to follow along in the video. You can trace along with me. I'll show you how to use these though, because they are fun and you might need them in your life. Now the paint colors I used are right here. I'm gonna list everything down below. And for the tools, you'll need some stylus tools, some dotting rods, and some silicone tools, and that's it. So, get all your supplies together and let's get started. So, for the base coat, I'm using two different color chalk paints and mixing them up to form a gradient. And here I'm just drawing a chalk line all the way around my stone just so that I have a line that I can bring the base coat to and then just end because I like to have some of the stone show up on the bottom. So my goal here is to create a gradient that goes from a dark blue to a light blue along the edge. So the first step is to paint a bl dark blue along the inside and then take your light blue and go along the edge of the stone and just create a light blue border, still working with wet paint. And you wanna kinda of do this kind of quickly because both paints have to be wet before you can blend them together. And now dry off your brush and do your best to blend. So now that both colors of paint are laid down and they're still wet, we're just gonna take our brush and mix the two paints together, just blend them out so that you have a nice gradient going from dark to light. Now, here's kind of a bummer. If you mess up and you're used to grabbing your base color to cover up any kind of boo-boos, you won't be able to do that very well here because you've got a gradient. So, if you don't care too much about this, just do a plain base coat and you'll be good to go. All right, so now it's all dry. And now we're gonna transfer the design. This is the fun part. So we're gonna do this trillium flower. It's a three petaled flower with um, three leaves. And for those of you following along at home, this is in the very back page of your booklet. You can do this with the five inch stencils, but right here we're using the three and a half inch stencils. The only difference is this one's going to have three leaves where the five inch stencil will have four leaves. So grab your orange stencil and you're gonna wanna find center on your stone. And it really, because it's not a perfect circle, the center can be anywhere and it'll be fine. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. And uh, I decided that right there would be a nice place. So now once you find center, grab a tiny little smidge of putty and put it right in the center. This will hold your stencil in place as you trace the lines. So I know for sure I want that top petal to point right at the top of the stone where the, the stone kind of gets skinnier at the top. And now I count one, two, three, and then draw the fourth line. So it's draw one, skip three. Okay, so this is the last line drawn on this side. Now you just remove the stencil. You'll flip it over. There's like a shiny side and then there's a matte side. So the matte side would be your, your second side. And then we're going to complete those petal shapes by using the reverse side of the stencil. So it's the same formula. You draw one line 
and then you skip three, count one, two, three, and then draw the fourth line to complete that second petal. One, two, three, and draw the fourth line. And then remove that, and you've got the trillium flower. So now we're gonna, we see that there are these squiggly shapes, kind of leaf looking shapes that are in between the petals. So I'm gonna grab my blue stencil, line up that center dot along with the crosshairs in the middle. And right now what we wanna do is create the petal in between. So we're going to pick the line that's in between the two petal shapes. We're gonna draw that. And then this is the three and a half inch stencil. So you do, you count three, one, two, three draw the fourth line and now do the same thing one two three and draw the fourth just like that okay so this is the third line so we're done with the shiny side so now we'll take off the stencil we'll flip it over and this side is matte and we're going to complete the design by lining up those lines and then draw one, skip three, until you've drawn, you've completed each one of those leaf shapes. All right, so there we have it. We've got that same design transferred to our stone. It looks just like it does in the book. And if you want, you can just go through and connect all those lines and make any adjustments that you'd like. If you want it to be more ornate, you can do that. I think um, I decided to close off those little teardrop shapes just like that. And uh, yeah, now it's ready to add paint. So we're gonna remove the putty from the inside. And um, here I'm gonna show you what the larger stone looked like with the five inch stencils. So this is what it looks like when you use the five inch stencils on a larger stone. It's basically the same shapes just bigger and in um, a pattern of four. All right, so this is what my thumb looks like, and that is what the center dot looks like. Uh, photography skills. Um, but anyway, that first gold dot was made with the purple tool, and now I'm using my one eighth inch pointed silicone tool to make those tiny dots surrounding the center dot. And I used white for the first row and light blue for the second row. And now using my largest clear rod, I'm going to use that folk art promenade color. It's like a peach ballet slipper pink and make one large dot right in each of those petals and then surround it with tiny gold dots all the way around. Now with stylus tools, you'll notice that your first dots are big and then as you use the tool, the dots get smaller and uh, that's the look that I'm going for here. And now using a slightly larger stylus tool, we're gonna to go in with that Deco Art Frosted Plum and make a larger um, ring of dots around that section. Now with a smaller stylus tool, we're gonna to use Deco Art Purple Sunset right along the tip of the plum row and just give it 
a little bit of brightness right in the center of each of those petals. And now we're gonna take a slightly larger tool and load it up with that purple sunset, kind of make a dot and then drag that paint out to create a teardrop shape on each of the edges of those petals. And now using a stylus tool, we're just gonna taper some Blue Harbor dots right down the edges of those petals. Okay, so this is important. I'm using my blue tool to add a big dot of this DecoArt Laguna paint, but notice, see how it's kind of swirly? The pigment, I didn't fully stir it. So the pigment is suspended kind of uh, not very homogeneously in that paint. So I'm stirring it with my silicone tool. Now, let me tell you that that was a mistake and I'll show you why later, but I just, I mixed it up in my palette and look at how much cleaner it applies. It's just a much more um, uniform consistency and um, it's just pigmented in, you know, in a correct way. Where the first one had some of the suspension, uh, the goo and the pigment were not fully mixed. So now we're gonna let that dry because if I don't, I'm gonna mess it up. So check this out, it's dry. Look at that one, the one that wasn't fully mixed. See all those wrinkles and cracks? That's what happens when your paint isn't properly stirred. Wow, so that's something interesting. A little chemistry. But now what I'm doing is I'm going in with Golden's Iridescent Bright Gold and I'm just adding tiny dots along the inside uh, of those petals and just brightening up that section. Now, see those shapes along the edges of the aqua teardrop shapes? Let's just fill those in with white dots. Now, right here, I'm wiping off the excess chalk. Sometimes those little chalky bits can get in the way of your paint and alter the way your paint is laid down. So it's better to have a smoother surface. Oops, messed up. So I'm gonna grab my silicone tool, it's a little cup chisel. I'm gonna remove most of the paint and then grab my Q-tip. If I had just gotten a Q-tip and tried to do this, it just would have smeared all the paint and made a bigger mess. So that's why I use, I like those silicone tools for removing boo-boo dots. Now I'm coming in with my purple tool and Deco Arts green tree color and creating an inset teardrop shape on top of that aqua shape. So the technique for this is you just apply enough paint to uh, allow you, you to drag that shape out. You can use a silicone tip, a stylus tip, a toothpick, um, whatever you've got just to grab that paint and move it along the surface out and into a point. And now continuing along the edges of those petals, we'll just add pink to the middle section of that outline on all three petals. And 
And now for the tips of the petals, we're just gonna add white dots along the outer edge of each of those three petals. And now to add some dimension and some um, vibrance, I'm gonna add Golden's Quinacridone Magenta. This is gonna be the darkest paint color in this painting. And it's going to hopefully add some depth to the inside of the flower, making the flower kind of pop out a little bit, hopefully. That's the goal. And now we're going to extend those dots out, kind of hanging out um, in between each of those petals, making the dots larger as we go. And you'll notice this paint is very, um, it acts very different. It's more fluid than Decor Americana. It's also more glossy and hard when it dries. Um, it's really beautiful for blending. This is a really pigment rich color and um, yeah, but it does dry dark, which is actually fine. That's, that's the way I wanted it to look. Now we're gonna attack that little section outside that leaf shape. I'm using my largest clear tool along with Deco Art Blue Harbor. And now I'm going to use a stylus tool and surround it with that light blue paint. Now I looked at that and I was like, meh, those dots are too big. It's not the right size. So I'm gonna use my silicone tool again, clean up the dots I don't want, repair the damage, get a smaller tool because I want tinier dots. And then, um, oh, I switched colors. Never mind, we're gonna use a uh, green tree. Yes. And now to finish the edges of those petals, we'll just use aqua in tiny dots surrounding those green dots. And now using our smallest stylus tool, just outline that pretty curve along the edge of those leaves with that quinacridone magenta. And now we'll take that brilliant gold and outline the edges of all the petals all the way around. Here we're coming in with more of that magenta. And then at this point, I realized I'm starting to move along the edges. So I grabbed this cool little stand. It's a tiny little Lazy Susan and Jessie D Designs makes, makes these. They're available at her Etsy store. And I'll link that down below. And now we'll just continue those dots along the sides of the long petals using that frosted plum. And now we'll switch to peach and place a dot along the edge of those longer petals. And then we'll continue that line just using a stylus tool and that peach color tapering the dots down uh, to each of the points of those uh, three of the longer petals. And now for the edges, we're gonna use these colors to fill in the rest of the sides of the stone. And we'll use the same stylus tool and just switch out the colors as the um, as it progresses down the edge. So 
So just to change the subject real quick, I'm just going to break in here. And, and Do you ever think about what this is like for you know, from the rock's perspective? Like rock painting is such a crazy thing. Like for this rock to have made it to this place, you know, it took you know, millions of years of pressure and heat and chemistry for this rock to form. And then at some point it gets broken off and ends up in a body of water somewhere in a river or an ocean and gets tumbled around for hundreds of years and gets all smoothed out. And, uh, and then some crazy lady comes along and decides to uh, make it special and put a bunch of paint all over it. I mean, it's just a very strange life cycle, but something, something to think about. So now that the whole stone is covered, I'm going to go back in with top dots. Now that everything has dried, I'm going to add one white teardrop, just inset a little bit more on those petal shapes and drop a dot down and then extend it out with my silicone tool. Here we'll add some gold. Now we'll add some of that plum on top of the magenta. Now adding a peach top dot on top of the plum. And now we're taking that magenta and we're going to add a dark tip to each one of those purple petals. Just like drop a dot and then drag it out. And now for the final finishing touches, you just want to go over any dots with a tint of that color, anywhere where you feel you want a little bit more decoration, and just tweak it as you'd like. Here I'll do this in fast motion so you don't have to see endless tiny top dot tweaks. So here is the dried finished stone. I love the way it came out. It's super weird. And now we're just going to take the chalk line off. Just get a wet cloth and just wipe it away. Now you'll notice as I wipe, you'll see that the surface of this stone gets really, really dark. I don't know if, you, if I could ever turn it and you could see. But whenever you see that happen, when you use varnish on this stone, that's what it's going to look like. So I'm going to only varnish to the edge of the paint. I'm not going to varnish the um, stone because I like the way a natural stone feels. And so I want to preserve that. So it's going to be naked on the bottom and then varnished on the top. But before I do that, I need to remove any little pieces of paint that have gotten on there. So I just used some acetone. For the varnish, I'm using Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. I want this one to be shiny because I'm going to end up putting crystals on it too. So this will protect the paint layer on the top. Now be very careful not to paint the stone because it will darken and it'll look like it's wet. Um, so I want to make sure that I leave the stone and only paint the top surface where the painting is. And now that my varnish is dry, I'm going to add some bling. So I've already pre-picked out my crystals and I'm using Judykin's Diamond Glaze. I've got those cool little Swarovski crystals and then I've got these little teardrops. And I'm just sticking them on there, removing the excess and we're just going to let that dry. So there it is. We can add another stone to the collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would love to have you as a subscriber. And if you need any dotting tools, stencils, or projects, come on over to the Dotting Center and I will hook you up. Well, I hope you guys have a fun and creative week and I will see you next time.